Hello, everybody, and welcome to our uh, first broadcast of the uh, of uh, using YouTube and uh, trying to uh, help everyone uh, get to be uh, better at uh, using our Gmail products and and uh, that sort of thing. So this is our first, hopefully, uh, first of many. Um, hopefully, uh, you can all see me. That's uh, that's the uh, hope and. Uh, and it is recording, so um, when the broadcast is complete, uh, a copy of this will be uh, made available through uh, YouTube as well. And if you want to go back and uh, revisit some things, or uh, if you didn't quite understand something, maybe you want to listen again. Um, or if you missed it all together and you wanted to uh, watch it later, you can do that too. Um, so I will make uh, that available as soon as uh, the, sh the program is finished. Um, the uh, uh, intention today is to cover the uh, area of advanced Gmail. So uh, I'll, I'll spend a few moments just talking a bit about uh, the Gmail interface and uh, you know the basic stuff, and we'll spend you know two, three, five minutes max on that, um, and then I'll get over into uh, uh, more advanced things, so tips and tricks and uh, advanced setting changes you might want to try. Uh, some of the labs that are available, um, uh, some of the s special features within Gmail you may not actually be using or aware of. Um, try and uh, show how that all works. Um, uh, talk a wee bit about uh, searching and uh, how to uh, to automate some of that stuff or to dig deeper, uh, get better search results. Um, use things called filters, which are uh, a way to uh, display only certain types of, uh, of email uh, using both searches and, and other features that they have in there. Um, and then just a couple of uh, other things related to uh, uh, sharing your email box with others. So you may have uh, um, a support person that uh, also sends email on your behalf, so there's a way to do that. Um, how to actually uh, get into uh, multiple email accounts. Uh, so let's say you've got your business account and you want to have your personal account. You can have them both going at the same time and, and how we can do that. And then I'll finish it up with a brief discussion about uh, this flash panel. I've mentioned this uh, in emails before. Um, it's something you uh, you want to get into because it's a way to improve um, the settings uh, that are presented in the directory. Um, uh, I'll talk more about that when I get to it. And also I'll cover a wee bit about the, the do not email thing that we've implemented on our signature lines. So I'll talk about all those things and then hopefully uh, I've got a, a question and answer uh, function uh, available here too and I'll uh, enable that to, towards the end and see if we can make that work too. So if you had any questions you wanted to uh, just send to me in a, in a message, uh, you could do that and then I'll try and answer them at the end. Um, if I don't get that working, I'll figure it out in the future and we'll get it working in the future. So first thing I want to do, I'm going to share my screen here and let you see uh, the um, Gmail interface. So let's get into that. So this is the uh, uh, typical out-of-the-box uh, Gmail interface that's provided uh, by Google um, without any of the special uh, uh, themes or uh, setting changes or any of that enabled. So it's pretty plain Jane as you can see. Um, one of the first things I'll point out is this area right here uh, shows you how much of your space that uh, you're allocated um, you are using. So in this case this particular user which is our devices account here in Wingham um, is using just under 8 gigabytes of space uh, of the 30 that's available. And what Google did uh, last year is they combined both the Gmail and the Google Drive uh, space into one. So it used to be you only got 15 gigs of uh, Gmail and then 15 gigs of uh, Drive. Um, they've combined them both together so now they're shared across uh, your, your account so to speak. Um, and there is ways to add to that, so if you're finding you're running out, um, you know, by all means talk to your local IT guy and uh, we can arrange to, uh, to get that up if needed. 
Um, I think production might be a place where that uh, request might come. I've noticed uh, uh, recently Nathan here in Wingham is uh, running real close to his limits on the 30 gigs, so that might be a place for us to up the number. Um, but anyways, I'm just going to run around the uh, interface for a few moments just to let you know how things are working. Uh, the Let's see here. Um, at the top, obviously, uh, that's the, the company logo there. Um, it's, it's like the home button on a website, so you can click on it. It will give you your inbox back. Um, this uh, top area is the search bar, and there is a drop down. You see a little arrow on this side to do more results, and when you click on the blue bar box, it, uh, it runs the search for you. Across the top here, this is your Google Plus uh, button or name. Um, so it'll say plus Rob or plus uh, Nathan, whoever it is that uh, you are. It'll show your name there, and if you click that, it opens up your Google Plus uh, uh, screen. Um, we'll cover uh, Google Plus at a future broadcast probably, so I won't spend any time on that at this time. Um, next to it here, this is the Google Apps menu button. Uh, the, the nine dots, I like to call it. Um, when you click on that, you get a drop down, and it gives you a, all the a quick access to all the Google Apps, uh, including a few others when you click on the More, and we'll get into that in a bit. Under this uh, bell here, this is your uh, notification indication. So if uh, um, there are things that Google is doing on your behalf, sometimes you'll notice this will have a number beside it, a red number, and, and if you click on it, it'll show you what Google's trying to warn you about or tell you about. Um, this is how you can uh, share uh, um, do a Google Plus share of, of function, which is similar to Facebook's, uh, you know, status update, um, but it's related to your Google Plus account. Everybody in Blackburn has a Google Plus account, so that uh, might be something you want to try out. Um, this icon on the far side typically has a picture that uh, of you, if if you've had one uh, uploaded or part of your Google Plus uh, account now. Um, and uh, when you click on it, it allows you to get in and you can edit uh, some of your account info. You can change the photo if uh, that's something you want to do. You can also look at your Google Plus profile over here. On the left-hand side, uh, there's a menu up at the top. Uh, it defaults to being mail, but if you change it, you can get to contacts and tasks uh, quickly as well. Uh, there's a big red Compose button. We all know that what that does. We've used that many times. And then on the left side here is a menu of uh, all the basic uh, areas within Gmail. Um, it also includes a listing of uh, labels, and I'll get into that more in a minute. And if you click on the More button here, it'll show you think areas that uh, you probably don't get into very often, but in case you need to, there's a, a, a folder that shows all your spam messages that have come in and any that have been deleted as well. So Google's got a couple of uh, policies. One is that spam is held for, I think it's uh, 90 days in here, and trash is held for 30 days. And then uh, it gets automatically deleted or kicked out after that time. So if uh, somebody sends you a message and it appears uh, you're not getting it, you can go look in your spam fil filter uh, folder and you will see uh, any messages there. It says more than 30 days that are automatically deleted. And here, trash is also uh, more than 30 days, and I've got one message in this particular account here. Um, one other area to be aware of, uh, there is this drafts area. So whenever you uh, start writing a new message and you don't finish it and you just close it or whatever, it'll show up in this drafts area. Uh, so it's, everything is automatically saved as soon as you create uh, the new message. So uh, don't ever worry about, uh, you know, if you're browser crashes or that sort of thing. Don't ever worry about that. Uh, speaking of browsers, one note I wanted to remind everyone, uh, to get the best uh, uh, experience with using Gmail, you should be using the Google Chrome browser. Uh, doing it in IE, uh, it functions, but it certainly doesn't look anything like what you see here today, and it's uh, not the best, uh, best software by any means. Um, and Firefox and others will show you stuff too, but again, you're not going to get all the features unless you're using the Google Chrome browser. Um, so let's see here, what else did I want to show you? Um, I'll go back to the inbox. Uh, here is a, uh, um, if you were to select that, it, it selects all the messages in the, in the, the page view, um, and then you can apply 
uh, functions or uh, actions to the messages that are selected. So if you select that and then hit a the more, it allows you to mark all the messages or do a bunch of uh, actions all at once. Um, you can also select a message on the side here in this little box and then apply things to it. Also, these quick links up here also apply to whatever is selected too. Um, this uh, particular interface is set up with the uh, uh, preview pane enabled on it, so you can see here I'm, I'm seeing the content of my email. Um, over on this uh, side there is a, a control for the preview pane, so we can change it to, to being turned off, or we can have it below, or horizontal as well if you'd like to see it below. Um, uh, there's uh, Again, this is a web interface, so it uh, tends to show everything in a page. So the, uh, the way to page through your emails is by using these arrow buttons here, back and forth, and let you see things. Um, and then over on the far side is this gear, and the gear also has a drop down. So if you click on gear, it takes you into this little menu here, and you can see uh, some things here. It talks about display density, which is how much information is shown on the, uh, how much white space is shown on the Google interface or Gmail interface. You can see it changing as I'm changing this. And on bigger displays, that might be helpful. So you can get more information, get less white space, and uh, and works pretty nice. Um, you can configure how your inbox is shown, and I'll get back to that one in a minute. Um, you can get into the settings area, which is the, all the tweaks and uh, stuff that you can do with the Gmail. And then you can also get into the themes area. So just for a moment, we'll go into themes. So here's uh, all the possible themes that uh, they offer. Um, there's nothing here that really you can customize. There is a, um, a couple of places down here where you can tweak things, I believe. But to be honest, I only use one, and I've uh, never really found it to be uh, much uh, that helpful to, to go to something that looks like that. I mean, it's uh, it's okay, but so in my particular case, I'm a big fan of uh, Android, so I like uh, I've got mine switched on like this, so you can see a little bit of circuit board stuff in the background there, a real high techy look. Um, but obviously, uh, you can go back and you can just uh, leave everything default, which is the light one up here. And as soon as you make the selection, obviously, it gets updated. Um, so let's go back here to uh, settings. And I want to go in for a few minutes, and uh, we'll just talk a bit more about some of the settings and advanced things you might want to know about. Um, on when uh, Being that this is Google Apps for Business, it's a Blackburn Radio version of Google Apps or Gmail. It's not the same as what you would have in your uh, uh, free version of Gmail. There's a few things that are different. Um, so one of the things is that we can push, uh, as administrators, we can push certain labs, they're called, which are add-ons for Gmail, to make the uh, Gmail experience a little bit better. So one of the things we push is the preview pane. So I've talked about the preview pane already. Um, it's the, the ability to have the message on the side or below the, the directory of uh, emails. And you can see it's uh, grayed out here. We can't actually change anything because this is something we've forced to be enabled um, on the admin side, and we've uh, forced it so it can't be disabled. So the only way around that is for you to go in here and uh, just leave it in no split, and then you, you have it turned off. But it's always enabled as far as having it available to you. Um, the uh, so that's that's the uh, the labs uh, that are uh, enabled by default. So there's a number of others here. There's uh, if a Google Map link comes in an email, it'll automatically create a, an in in page uh, Google Map for you. Um, same with pictures. So over on the uh, um, Whenever you get an email from somebody who's uh, got a picture in there, or sorry, this is pictures and chat. So over on the left-hand side of your screen, there is a listing of uh, chat, uh, the Google Chat option you have available. So if there's pictures enabled on them, they show up as well. So you'll know who they are when they're when they're showing up in there. Those are on by default. Uh, there's also an undo send, and that one's a real cool feature that I like to use regularly because. Sometimes we uh, start to 
we decide we're going to send something and then decide ah, that maybe I better reword that and so there's an option to undo it and you'll see here under the general tab and settings there's an undo send field that's uh, available here and it's, it's enabled and the cancellation period defaults to being 10 seconds maybe you need that longer so you can set, change that up and make it as long as 30 seconds if you need so um, Again, what happens is when you do a, uh, an email to somebody, and I'll send it to myself. Uh, let's do this. And then I hit uh, send. It says uh, your message has been uh, sent, undo, and it'll stop it from being sent. So it brings it back in as a draft. So it's what it does is kind of holds on to it for an extra 10 seconds uh, after you click send to give you that option to undo it. And uh, as you can see here, it shows up as in my drafts now because it made a copy of it. It saved it locally for you. If you don't want to send it at all, you can just hit delete on in the drafts uh, folder. Um, let's go back here, settings. And the other one I wanted to show you was under this uh, one here. It's called default text style. Um, this uh, comes defaulted, uh, or this is uh, a normal part of uh, Gmail. Um, it's, it sends all your emails default to look like that. But if, let's say you're uh, more of a creative type and you want to use Comic Sans or something like that, well, there's the option to change that. So now all future emails that you send out will have Comic Sans. And you can change uh, the font size as well if you want to make it bolder. And all your future emails will be sent out that way. So it's a, a way for you to, feed, uh, to uh, personalize your, your Gmail uh, messages without having to physically go in and change them each and every time you do use this thing. Um, the other thing about labs is uh, you'll notice these ones are all grayed out, so they're always on, but there's a whole bunch of others that you might consider trying out. Um, some uh, are useful, some less so, but uh, uh, one of the ones to, to test uh, or to try is this one called uh, canned responses. Um, so what you do is uh, to enable a, any lab, you click on the enable uh, radio button here and then go down to the bottom and click on save changes. Um, so in the case of uh, this canned responses, it shows up like this. What you do is you compose a message, uh, you, you create a template, so let's say you're going to put in the words, uh, thanks uh, for your message. Uh, we will respond uh, shortly. So let's say you want to have uh, an, a canned response. You don't have to type all this out every time. So you make this uh, default message or template. You go down to this little uh, uh, arrow down menu item down at the bottom here. You click on that and now you'll see there's a canned responses here. You can click on new canned response and we're going to call it thanks for your message. And now we can delete it because it was just a template. And then I hit compose. I go down to the bottom here. I've now got canned response. Thanks for your message. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I did that wrong. <laughs> Let's try that again. So I've, I've got another one in here, another template we can try. So sales meeting agenda. So I'm going to insert it. I don't want to delete it. I want to insert it. So I'm going to insert a template, which I've already created. And there it is, and all of our info that we wanted to share. Maybe I want to update a few things before I send it, and then I hit send. And uh, everybody that needed to see that will get it, and I don't have to type all this stuff in all the time, or every time I'm going to use it. So that was uh, one of the labs that you might want to try out if you're uh, needing that. Um, let's see here, labs. Another... Uh, one that you could try is this mark as red. This just by enabling this. Uh, so when we're looking in here, there is a uh, there's the ability to. Well, this is what it looks like here. So if we enable mark as red, it shows uh, an extra button for us. So we go to labs, and then down here to mark as red, enable, save changes. So now if I select that, you can see there's a button up here called Mark is Red. So that might be uh, 
something you could turn on and, and it kind of speeds things up when you're reading your messages. Um, with all these labs, they can easily be turned off again by just going to uh, which one we've just enabled and disabling it again and then hit Save Changes and it will be gone. So it's now gone from up here and it doesn't mess up anything. Uh, I've never had any issues with the uh, labs uh, screwing up. But they also tell us here that uh, if, uh, if a lab option breaks and you're, you can't get into your email, there's a way to, to bypass the labs altogether by putting this little uh, question mark labs equals zero at the end of the uh, at the end of the URL at the top here. You'll never use it, but just something to be aware of. Um, there was another one I liked in here too. Uh, in my case, I've got the right side chat turned on, so you can see over here the chat is actually on the left side. I I like to have a more balanced look on my screen, so if you enable right side chat and hit save changes. Um, there they are. So now the chat's over on the right hand side. And when I select the message, it's in between. So just something that's, uh, again, it's a preference and something you might want to try out. Uh, let's see here. Yep, that's all I wanted to show you for that. Um, back over on uh, emails, um, you'll notice uh, there's, a, there's a little uh, tag right here on the message. And if, if uh, a message comes in that Google determines is important, so typically important uh, markers, um, there's a, a whole area, if you look on, uh, on the help uh, page for Google, uh, for Gmail, and it'll tell you how it derives it, but it's an algorithm they've got to determine that if a message comes in from uh, somebody who you regularly con uh, converse with, um, you can you can say that I want all uh, messages like this one to be marked as uh, the future or important in the future, and uh, Google will will now know you've uh, you've taught it now. Click to teach, so you're teaching Google that the message is uh, important. So um, any future messages that come in from Bob now will likely be marked as important. So obviously I'll turn that off because Bob's not as important to me as say. Oh, Scott. I want Scott uh, messages to be in my important list, but not Bob. So there you go. It's uh, now all the uh, messages from Scott would come in, and they would be marked as important. And it's just a, it's a helpful tool for filtering because you can see over on the side here. If I want to look at only my important messages, then the ones that are marked with this uh, little flag here will show up in the filter. Um, so it's a quick uh, way to show up uh, certain e types of emails. Um, there's also something I wanted to show you was the this little uh, double icon here. There's a uh, inside there you can get I forget what these are called uh, carrots I think it is. Um, there's a, a double one here and sometimes there's a single one and if you again do a little search but it'll tell you that I think if the single one is uh, if it's a, a message that you've replied to then, or a double one, I think it is. Then, if you reply to the message, it shows up uh, as this thing here. So it, it helps you to understand a wee bit about where uh, the messages are coming from and, and what your relationship is to that message or that sender. Um, there is something uh, called inbox styles that uh, I wanted to mention to you. So over here under the configure inbox or under this menu, under the settings menu, there's a configure inbox. You can change the way the, uh, the inbox is presented to you with tabs. Um, it's, it's helpful. Um, what it does is it Google puts uh, filters uh, in your inbox to say that if it is uh, related to something coming from Facebook or YouTube or uh, Google Plus for that matter, um, and it, it's not real spam, but it's just uh, like newsletters and all that kind of thing. It'll put it under these, uh, these tabs for you. And so by doing that, it cleans up your email box a bit. You can see now, my email is now split across three different tabs. 
and when I look over under social, all my Google Plus messages and YouTube messages and everything show up under that. So it, it's a way to clean up your inbox so it's less cluttered, let's say. Um, and you can tweak that again by going under the, uh, the gear and configure inbox. You can turn on certain things so it tells you about them. So primary is going to have your person-to-person -person conversations, all the ones you're, that are important to you normally. Um, social shows you messages from all the social networks and, uh, and the like. Promotions are going to be about uh, newsletters and, and uh, sales kinds of things. Uh, I've, I've got all my newsletters going to, to under the promotions. Updates, uh, these are things that um, it's, Google determines are, are related to bills and receipts. Uh, maybe that works, I haven't really tried it, so it might be something to test. Um, and then here again, here's another one for mailing lists. So if you get a lot of uh, emails from, uh, say, uh, well, uh, mailing lists include our groups. So um, you're familiar with groups, uh, I suppose. I'll talk a bit about that too. Uh, groups are, uh, are ways to, that we've got to have a single email come in and then go to multiple people at once. So like news.wingham at blackburnradio.com will have all uh, messages that come into it will get dispersed across all the members of the newsroom. So if you had this selected, that would also uh, be a way to get that kind of email out of your primary inbox. Um, anyways, that is a, an option for you. You can uh, turn it on and you can turn it off as well. Um, I think if you turn everything off like that, it goes back to yeah, there goes back to uh, to nothing. So there we go. That's uh, a way to do uh, the priority inbox. You can also have uh, if you go into your settings and under inbox, you can also have um, uh, important messages. There's a inbox type up here. You can have important messages go first. Uh, those are the ones with are flagged with that little yellow tag. You can have all the unread messages first. Maybe that's something you like to do. Um, you can have ones that are starred. So uh, starring is another way to filter. And uh, I'll talk a wee bit about that in a bit. Um, and then priorities are another thing uh, that you could, uh, is, is this one here using the categories. That's the priority uh, inbox style. Um, that's uh, it for the inbox styles. There is a keyboard shortcut, so let's go look here under settings, uh, shortcuts. Where was shortcuts? Here. Keyboard shortcuts. So keyboard shortcuts, uh, if you're a guy who spends a, a lot of time on your keyboard, these are, there's a, there was, I, I took you to the help, uh, by the way, sorry, I should have shown you that. Uh, the Learn More, when you clicked on that, it opened up another tab for us. Um, so it allows you then to do shortcuts uh, to get to different uh, parts of the screen, different, uh, you can, when you're reading messages, you hit the P button, it takes you to the previous message, the end button takes you to the next message, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I haven't used them a lot myself, but you might be someone who does. So just be aware that it exists, so you can do that. Um, next item I wanted to cover, oh, searching. So searching, um, helpful tool in a big way because Gmail does searches really well because uh, obviously they're owned by Google. So if I wanted to see, um, uh, you can just type in a, a search. So let's say I want Bob Beck and uh, messages, so beckon, uh, e beckon at earnradio.com, and I can do a search for that, and there's all the Bob Beckon messages. Um, I can search for Bob Finley, and because I've, uh, he's known by, by this user, so the uh, device is Wingham user, um, as a person, he's, he's probably received an email from him. It shows up in the drop down here. As uh, I'm sure all of you uh, have been using Gmail for some time now, so you will see this. Uh, the drop down will fill 
with uh, everybody's uh, uh, name and picture and stuff like that for all the people that already that you're already conversing with. So that'll that'll fill by default. Um, the other way to search, which uh, might there is there's all kinds of short codes and things that you can do in here. I've never really learned them, so I'm I'm a I'm a big fan of just filling in a form. So if you want to find all the messages from Bob Beckham, well, let's do that and then do a search. So now you can see there's all the messages from Bob Beckham. The search bar changed and filled in with from colon bracket Bob Beckham at blackburnradio.com bat bracket. So it filled it in as a search term for you. So now you can copy that and save it and reuse it if you like, or you can um, you can actually create shortcuts for that. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But it's a way to uh, to uh, customize your search results, and this follows all the gives you all the basic uh, options you can use in a search term. So uh, Google will fill this whole thing out with a search term here. If I go, I want to have all the messages from Bob Beckham within that date, and I hit that. So now you can see all the messages from Bob Beckham after, and then puts the date in. So this becomes a search term that you can save as a as a search link. Um, and there's a, if there's a regular search you do all the time, you can actually save that. Um, the other thing you can do with searches which is helpful for automating your email distribution. So let's say you've got uh, an email that comes in um, regularly and you want to have it uh, be labeled up um, as, let's say, a, a report uh, label. And uh, you want to have it automatically go uh, out of the inbox and into the report labeled uh, that shows up on the side here. All the labels show up on the side. So if you want to have that automatically go there, you can create a filter with this term. So by doing that, you can then say, okay, uh, have it to take it out of the inbox. So I don't want any messages from Bob Beckham that it, that came after that date to to show up in the inbox. And I want to apply a label, and I'm going to label it to Bob Beckham emails. Do that, and you can see here there it showed up as a label over there. And I want to uh, let's see, and I'm going to apply it to the existing one. So there we go. I hit create a filter, and now anytime an email comes in from Bob Beckham to the devices.wingham account, it will automatically get flagged uh, with the uh, the term Bob Beckon. So you can see up here there's a, a label applied now. It says Bob Beckon email. And this is the uh, labels over here. Um, it automatically gets labeled that way. It also removes it from the inbox. So you won't find Bob Beckon emails in your inbox anymore. It removed it from there. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that nothing gets deleted unless you actually delete it from within Gmail by Gmail. So when, when it removed from your inbox, all it did is uh, uh, remove the inbox flag that uh, all messages that come in normally get. And it places all emails show up in this all mail place. So even the Bob Beckham messages are going to be in here under this uh, under the all mail. So no matter what, it's, it's going to be there but it also goes into this all mail. So uh, if you seem like you're losing or missing something, go look under this all mail box and you'll find everything. Everything that uh, is inside Gmail will show up in the all mail box. Everything except for trash and spam, that is. <laughs> the spam and trash are all kept separate. But everything else shows up under the all mail. So back here, we have a label um, that's been applied. And there's all the messages, and you can see the label applied up there. Let's say I want to uh, customize that even a bit more. I can go here and change the color. So I'm going to let uh, Bob all the Bob Beckham emails are now going to be a bright orangey, reddish color. And again, when we're looking at the inbox, they show up here 
all bright and orangey. The other thing we can do is here's a message from Dale. So let's apply a label to him. If we go up here, labels, it's one of the options. We can create a new one that says Dale. Uh, let's say Doobie. Doobie. All right, so we've created a label that uh, has been applied. Um, we want to apply it to Dale. There it is, Doobie. Apply that. There, so it shows up uh, there with Doobie. You can see it's also applied here. And there is a uh, uh, a label on the side here with Doobie. Let's make him yellow. There. So now you can see now when I'm looking through my inbox and a message comes in that's been marked as Doobie uh, with the label Doobie, it shows up with this little yellow flag, which helps these uh, messages to stand out for you. And again, you can automate these things by applying a filter to uh, to these messages. So when you apply a filter, you're going to have you're going to have uh, uh, the ability to add labels, add categories, um, a whole bunch of things like that. If you ever want to see all your filters, go back to the gear and settings, and there's a listing here of filters. So there's the one that I created for Bob Beckon. It says any message comes in from Bob Beckon, skip the inbox, apply the label Bob Beckon. So you can uh, do that across the board. There it is. We can apply labels, we can mark it as important, you can do a whole bunch of things like that. Um, so you can do that for any inbound message and uh, the labels uh, get applied, which uh, I find really helpful. So um, that's uh, about using filters. Um, you can, as I mentioned, you can have all your unread messages show up at the top, which uh, helps you to, to be a little more efficient on your inbox. Um, there is, uh, you know, the philosophy out there that uh, your inbox should be kept empty or emptied every day, kind of thing. What you're doing when you're emptying it is you're uh, you're just doing something with the message. So when I when I go here, I can mark it uh, as uh, if I remove this inbox label from a message, um, it takes it out of the inbox but it keeps it in the all mail. So it's a way for you to, as you're reading messages, um, you can get rid of them. One other, one other uh, lab that I've used uh, in the past that helps really nice is when you're reading, there's a read and archive. Uh, where was it here? Um, or send an archive, I guess it was. Uh, the mark is red. We'll just mark uh, mark it as red. But there's another one here that will. Um, oh, I forget where I put it. Let's see here. Archive. I'll have to look for that, and I'll send a note out about it. But there is a way to uh, to have it mark as um, as being uh, archived, and so that it doesn't show up, it'll as soon as you uh, reply to an archive. I think it was called. So um, when you reply to the message, it will actually remove it from the inbox, remove the conversation from the inbox, and uh, keep it in the all mail only. So again, it helps to clean out your uh, your inbox if that's something that's important to you. Um, I've mentioned uh, before there's a couple of ways to do multiple email. Um, you can actually delegate your, your uh, email box to somebody else to use. So if you go under the settings and inbox, uh, sorry, uh, accounts and import, and then you grant access to your account. This is to, to allow you, if you have uh, somebody who works uh, as a support person for you, they regularly uh, would send mail on your behalf or you would like them to send mail on your behalf. This is how you do that. So you grant access, and you put the person's email address in here, and then they will have the ability to uh, to, to read all your email and send mail on your behalf. And that's 
something that uh, could be helpful. Um, I don't know of many people that would need it, but it's just something to be aware of. It does exist. Um, and then the other uh, option you have is the ability to um, have multiple accounts. Um, Gmail or Google has uh, gone to the single sign-on uh, solution. So when you first go into Gmail, you're given uh, this uh, little web uh, login page, and it applies to all the Gmail uh, uh, apps related to that account. Uh, but you can add multiple accounts so that you can actually change your uh, um, let's do devices. Sorry. There. So now I'm looking at the devices Sarnia account, and I was able to change by now I'm when I'm uh, so if I close that window. And I'm in my uh, my normal Gmail. I've logged in as Gmail. Uh, oh, look at that! Didn't didn't save for me. Let's see what happens here. Oh, it's because I'm under uh, I'm doing this under an incognito uh, browser. But if uh, on your own, if you add uh, your home email in, then what'll happen is when you go here, it'll show up as a little drop-down box here, and you can select to log in directly into that Gmail without having to log out of your other Gmail. Um, as soon as you sign out again, it's all gone away, and you won't have to worry about somebody uh, reading your emails or personal emails on you, but it is a way to add multiple accounts, access multiple accounts from, from within one uh, Gmail instance like we've got here. So uh, you might find that helpful. Um, just to uh, quickly move along, I want to show you a couple of other things here. And hopefully we have some time to, uh, to uh, talk about uh, future plans and stuff like that. But uh, let me close that. Um, this is the Google Apps menu bar up at the top. You can use this to, uh, to access uh, all the different apps that Google has here, so like the calendar or groups. Um, but there's, if you click on the more button down here, it drops it down, and one of the features that you'll find is this one called Flash Panel. Um, people have asked me about updating their signature line. We, uh, we changed the signature line to comply with the, the new uh, anti-spam laws that uh, uh, the federal government implemented this year, back uh, July 1st. And um, so in order for you to update your info on your signature line, this is the place you want to go to do that. So if you click on Flash Panel, it will uh, it may prompt you to do this. If it does, you pick the, your default uh, email. This is probably because I had added the uh, second account up there. So if we click on Continue, it will let me in to Flash Panel, to the Flash Panel uh, front uh, console. So I've sent out a note about this before, but uh, the simple uh, uh, method here to, to edit your directory info is you get to this Flash Panel screen, you go up to the Your Profile area and click on Edit, and it now takes you into this Edit Contact Info. So this is the, the places where you can update your info related to your signature line. So you can put in uh, Director of Penguins. Um, you can put your manager's name, Dwayne Duck. Hey, how's that for a name? Managing that. Um, the IT department, whatever you want to call it. Department, if you recall, on the signature shows up uh, below your name. Uh, or sorry, title uh, falls below your name. Manager isn't used. Department isn't used. Company is though. Company shows up in the line below Blackburn Radio Inc. So uh, the signature line has Blackburn Radio Inc. And then there's an area below it that will show this. So if you want to put in uh, the call signs for your radio stations you work for, uh, uh, in the case of, uh, like, uh, Ron Dan has uh, Wingham, Sarnia, and London listed uh, at that point, so showing that he uh, manages that uh, group of branches. Um, 
you can go in and uh, add a phone number for your normal uh, contact uh, method. Um, adding a mobile doesn't uh, apply as far as the signature line is concerned, but it does show up in the company directory. So under the contacts area of Gmail, uh, there is a directory listed there on the left-hand side. And so if you fill this info in, it will show up under the, uh, in the directory, which, uh, you know, for most of us can be helpful for people getting uh, access to everybody. Um, you can go down to uh, below here. There's the address area that does show up in the signature line, so you can put that in uh, correctly. If you have multiple addresses, some people may have multiple addresses they want to share, just put them all together in one plate, in one address. Don't add an address, just put them uh, multiple lines under here, under this uh, box, and then they will all show up in your signature line. The signature line is updated uh, automatically every uh, Sunday night. It's uh, something we can't change, so it's uh, fixed every Sunday night. It will refresh. Um, so if you've made changes, the changes won't uh, apply until that following Sunday. So just be aware it does take a little bit of time for that to happen. Um, and then when you're all done, you go down here and hit update and now your uh, your info will be updated um, for the uh, for the directory and for the and for your signature line so both of those show up under the directory um, if we look here and do uh, devices uh, uh, Oh no, it's uh, Weber, John Weber. Put in a name. There, so it shows uh, in this particular directory listing uh, that Flash Panel has, shows uh, my name and everything. Um, the. Uh, there's a picture from the Google Plus shows up. All that kind of information is pulled together into one place. So again, this is where you update your your directory information. Um, it's the simple place to do it, and like I say, it uh, it updates your signature line for you automatically. Um, related to the uh, do not email, I mean that is uh, a requirement uh, that we have to uh, follow. Um, the uh, Signature line is one element of it. What happens is, is when a, a new message is created, it uh, automatically tags your signature to the bottom of it. So it's got the name, in this case, this device is Wingham, which obviously we wouldn't be sending emails by, but it puts the company name. And if I had the, uh, the, uh, the company field filled in with a station info, it would show up right here. And then if the address and phone number info was uh, was filled in, it would also show up down below here as well. When it's empty like it was, it uh, automatically deletes and uh, removes any spaces so it doesn't look uh, weird, so to speak. Um, the final part of the signature that's used by the do not email is this little tagline here at the bottom. And it's got a link embedded in it, which is here. And uh, that link embedded uh, would, it's not complete here because this isn't uh, a functioning email account, but um, would have the uh, mail to uh, renders at blackburnradio.com, uh, question mark, subject, do not email. So it'll pre-populate an email message for you um, so that uh, the, send or the recipient of, uh, of your email can unsubscribe send you a note to unsubscribe with little effort. That's the whole point of that. And that is a requirement of the CASEL legislation, so we have to make sure that uh, all of our outbound emails include this signature line just the way it is. I've had requests for uh, including logos and the, the uh, powers to be uh, in on the legal sense have said that including logos is a form of marketing and therefore we should not include those in there but uh, we are able to uh, just put in our, our uh, station slogans and other uh, items like that just in that uh, using that company field inside your signature or inside your directory info so that's a place for you to put that 
Um, so uh, what happens? The rest of the uh, the back end of uh, what happens with the do not email is that that email will come in. Uh, that replied email. So when they send you an email, uh, clicking on that link to tell you to do not email them anymore, it will uh, automatically be filtered and placed in this do not email label, and will show up as a listed here. And uh, it's it's your legal obligation on behalf of the company to respect that. So if somebody does that to you, first of all, um, you know, take note. Be aware that that's a requirement. We have to follow, uh, do what they say as far as do not emailing them. Um, and the reason is, is that uh, there are some pretty stiff fines that uh, you, as a as a user, and uh, the company can um, be subject to. Uh, literally million dollars. So big, big bucks if, uh, if we're not careful there. So, um, so again, it does show up in those two places as well. The email server in the back end monitors for these types of uh, email messages coming in and places them in a Google uh, group that's called Do Not Email. So if you're ever wondering if there is a, um, if if a Do Not Email uh, message has been received from a particular user or somebody says they have and uh, and you wanted to know if it's there, you go into the Google Apps group uh, Google Apps menu bar and select groups, it takes you here, click on browse all and go to the bottom usually and there is one there called do not email. So it uh, is a group that uh, has an archive of all the messages that uh, show up uh, from people that don't want to receive emails from us. Um, it's similar to, you know, works the same way as the other uh, other uh, group uh, messages that uh, you may have seen, like we've got, uh, it would look like this if there was messages in there from uh, people not wanting to be emailed, they would show up here in this uh, listing like this, the same way as this. Okay, so that's pretty much it for uh, the seminar today. Uh, we're pushing almost an hour, so um, I'm just going to go back here to to here and let you see my pretty face again. There I am. So uh, thanks very much. Um, I hope that uh, you found this useful today. I um, will try and uh, enhance it and improve it as time goes on and hopefully uh, uh, make it uh, even more useful. Um, I welcome uh, feedback, obviously. Uh, try not to be too hurtful and not, uh, you know, I've got a face for radio. Maybe not for uh, for doing these things. So uh, I appreciate uh, any constructive criticism you have, though. So please uh, send them uh, via emails or uh, or uh, chat messages if you like. I'm I'm on Google Chat all the time. Um, so by all means, uh, do that and let me know if uh, you had any uh, other areas you want me to cover. Uh, um, my plan is to try and do this on a fairly regular basis. So for maybe as often as monthly. I I would promise that, but. Uh, fairly often and uh, I'll try and and uh, uh, cover a pile of other topics. So uh, in the past here in Wingham I've done uh, some seminars on uh, calendaring and uh, and uh, Google Groups. So we could uh, try and expand on those things a bit for everybody. Um, I could just do some, uh, some real basic stuff uh, or specific stuff related to uh, say filters or you know, anything you, you can think of, uh, by all means, let me know. And uh, like I say, uh, let's uh, we'll try this again real soon. All right, so thanks very much. Take care, and see you soon.